It's time to focus on seniors with Helping Seniors TV. The television show designed to make you aware of senior issues and needs, as well as to acquaint you with the resources available to help you age in place and with dignity. Now, here's your host, Joe Steckler. I'm Joe Steckler, and welcome to Helping Seniors, the television arm of Helping Seniors of Brevard County. Our show is designed to provide you with information on how to develop your own aging and care plans. Our topic today is periodontal disease, and joining me is Dr. Michael Furtado with Sotabite Dental Implants. And before we even introduce Dr. Furtado, I want to make a, a couple of comments because we're going to do something different in this show today. We're going to have a doctor, you, Dr. Furtado, talk a little bit before we even get into the the, 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 it, the nitty gritties of the show about periodontal disease, but Dr. Furtado is going to help our you, our viewers, understand how he feels about what he's doing here working with Dr. Lee Sheldon as Salabite Dental Implant, because I think it's important what Dr. Furtado shared with me before the show that you share with our viewing audience, Doctor, why you enjoy practicing with Dr. Sheldon? Um, well, uh, I, I come from, a, from a, background, a different background. I, I, was, I, was, I did my dental school in Brazil, then I did five years of grad school in Canada, then three years of periodontal school in, in, in uh, Connecticut, and then I went to work in Texas. And now I'm here for about two months. And I went briefly over that on our last newsletter. We have a newsletter that we sent to the patients, an email, e-newsletter. Um, so I feel like I have different uh, perspectives of what dental care is and what kind of, what kind of instruments you use and how, this, how science has developed since when I started dental school about 11 years, 12 years ago. Uh, and I knew Dr. Sheldon, I knew of him. I didn't know him. He's very active in, in all the periodontal forums that we have. We receive uh, a lot of emails with dentists or, or periodontists who exchange questions. Sometimes we see a problem, a problem case, or we, we don't know what to do, or we ask about new technology. And if you open those forums, it's, it's amazing how uh, Dr. Sheldon is active on those forums. And if you see him working on, uh, you know, on a daily basis, you, you start questioning how, how he can manage his time. So, um, so I didn't know him. I knew of him before. And when I got here, I, um, I really, it, it really felt like it was the best place to be. Um, on top of everything that's perfect, the, the staff is, is really well trained. Uh, but talking only on uh, about the technology that we have, he has the cutting edge technology, uh, that you, the, the most advanced technology that you can imagine. He's always looking at the next thing. What's the next thing? He, um, we had a high uh, definition uh, CT scan for patients where we can see if the patient has bone or where they have bone for, for, uh, for implant, dental implants or we can see bone defects for patients that have uh, periodontal disease, gum disease. He uses the most advanced uh, technology on bone grafting, where we take blood from our patients and we uh, select the right growth factors and use when we're doing bone grafts. Um, we do wait, 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 wait. Uh, our viewers may not understand. What, what you can do when you take the blood mm -hmm. and mix with the other chemical you put that in into the into the gum yeah and it actually grows bone yeah, yeah. And, and and it grows bone so well folks that when dr sheldon did it to me when he put my implants on this side he grew too much bone he had to grind so he likes to practice his surgical skills so he went back in and cut some more of that bone out so there was enough room to put the implants in. And that's what I wanted you, Dr. Furtado, to, to, to sort of help our viewers understand that uh, dental medicine, like, like body medicine, if I use the terminology, you're always trying to move to the forefront to do things, I want to say, more cost-effective, yeah. uh, maybe do it better, 
uh, the technology that you're developing now with bone implants and, and the overall treatment of periodontal disease, which you're going to talk about today, we have so many different things we can bring that are now tools to help us treat the mouth. Yeah, it's amazing how science has just exponentially grew. It's, it's, just, it, it's just fantastic. And what happens is, um, in, in our case, what Dr. Sheldon has done, for instance, he's, uh, he's trained, he went on a training in Spain. We have two, um, two branches of that uh, blood graft, that what we call PRGF. It's uh, pl platelet-rich growth factor. Right. What that does is that, that, comes, that goes straight back to stem cell technology. You have a soup of factors on that type of uh, blood that we spin that would stimulate your own body's stem cells to migrate to that area and create bone there faster than any type of bone graft that we've developed before. And uh, we do it right here in Melbourne, Florida. We do it right here. Yeah. But I, I asked Leah this question years ago on the show. How many other dentists do you think, doctor, have the same type of uh, in-house capability that you and Dr. Sheldon have as Celebite? I, I don't think many. I don't think many. Despite this being something that's uh, uh, not new, it's, it's been there for more than 15, 20 years. It, it's, you see that mainly, mainly on uh, skin grafts when people have burns or orthopedic surgeons use that all the time. So you talk to patients and they say, oh, you're going to use the same thing that my doctor used on my back when I did the back surgery. It's, it took a while for us in dentistry to understand that that's not only for soft tissue. It can grow bone as well. A stem cell is an undifferentiated cell that can be uh, killed, can, can be led to build whatever you want. If you're in a bone environment, it grows bone. Yeah. What a lot of people don't understand, Dr. Furtado, is that dentists are some of the primary reconstructors of terrible war wounds dealing with the jaw and the facial structure. I had a, a dental surgeon when I was executive officer on a superintendent with one of the leading surgeons in the United States, and his, his, his skill was reconstructing the bone and the jaw and and when that in those days that was forty years ago, they didn't have what you and Lee have, where you can take the blood, the platelets, and grow bone. They didn't do that then. No, well, they would have to take uh, either from their own patients, from the hip, yes. from the rib, uh, and then use uh, plating, uh, fixing screws. They still use that for bigger grafts. You can't. There's only so much bone you can yes. grow yeah. uh, with with the PRGF. But but you can fill in with the bone exactly. growth. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now you can combine techniques. Yes. Yeah. Just yeah. to make them heal faster. So let's talk about periodontal disease. Sure. So you're giving a. We're, we're talking about building bones and reconstructing. Yeah, we went ahead. But that's important. Yeah. Dentistry is something, uh, Doctor Fortado, that has changed tremendously over the years. But seldom do we really bring these changes to the attention of people. And that's why I felt it was so important for you to tell our viewing audience, what is periodontal disease? How is it associated with gum disease? You did this on the radio, and that's why I wanted to do it on TV. Go ahead, okay. your show. Um, so uh, periodontal disease is classified as a chronic inflammatory disease that is caused by bacteria. So it's an infectious disease. Uh, that's chronic, and there's some uh, inflammatory component there. Why is that important? That means um, bacteria cause the disease. You have bacteria right. on your teeth, and your immune system tries to fight the bacteria. Until that point, I'm fine. You have a cut in your, in your hand, and your immune system goes there and tries to wall that off so that you heal. That's the initial stage of inflammation. I'm okay with that. That's how we evolved to be what we are today as humans. Uh, um, but when it gets to a point where it becomes chronic, that's the problem. When we can't contain the inflammation, when your body overreacts against the bacteria, bacteria in your mouth, that's when you start losing bone. That's when you start losing gums. And that's when you start having bacteria going to your body. 25, 30 or, or more years ago, we didn't know about the connection between body and mouth. 
we would treat those separately. So you have gum disease, you go to a periodontist, you go to a dentist. But isn't, isn't the mouth, by virtue of the fact that sort of when you got your, well, when you're sleeping and your mouth is closed, and you're, if you so say you don't snore mm -hmm. and you got your mouth closed, isn't that closed environment make it more conducive for, for bacteria to grow if you have a problem and it's not treated? Um, Yes, there's there's different bacteria for everything. In okay. in the case of gum disease, a uh, type of bacteria is different from caries, for instance, or cavities, for instance. So gum disease bugs uh, don't like air. They okay. are anaerobics in in their majority because they're under the gums. There's not a lot of oxygen there. They don't like light. They like the dark, and they like protein. They like blood. And all that's right here. Right there, you have everything there. Cavities bugs like sugar. And I don't care about, they mostly, they like oxygen because it's, it's out of, the, outside of the gums. And once you have the gum bacteria in, the gum disease bacteria in, that's, uh, that's an easy uh, access to the bloodstream. What are some of the ways the periodontists differ from other doctors, dentists, in the treatment of periodontal disease? Why is this so important? for our viewing audience to understand what you're talking about and why many people probably should seek periodontal care other than just regular dental care. I think there's two main factors here that, um, that are important to, to note. One is that uh, a periodontist is a dentist that has three years, three additional years of training just on periodontal disease, just on, on this type of Relationship between gum disease in the body, bone grafts, gum grafts, and, and, and implants, dental implants. Uh, so we specialize on those complex cases um, where patients are losing teeth, or, or rather, we try to see patients before they start losing teeth. We, we really try to save teeth. So we specialize in treatment planning patients not to lose their teeth. And if the ink, if, if in the case that they lose their teeth, in the case that we, we deem the teeth hopeless, we'll try to give their function back. So it, it's a, it's a really a comprehensive uh, view on your mouth. And it goes from the biomechanical standpoint, from the biological standpoint. So we look, if you have support, this is very much like engineering. You have to have long roots in, te in, in bone to support your bite. You well, I think one of the operative words is support. Uh, uh, I, I don't think that uh, as we're schooled in, in the United States, that as we go through our, our elementary schools and our high schools and our colleges, uh, not a great deal of attention is, uh, is devoted to, to the, what happens if you take one or two teeth out of the 30, 16 bottom, 16 top, 32 is right. Yeah, yeah I got the right number. <laughs> But if you take a couple of those out of there, the shift in a jaw, and that, if you if you have a periodontal problem, that exacerbates the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, when you lose teeth, what happens, there's many uh, consequences to losing teeth and not doing anything. It is always an option not to do anything, uh, but we try to substitute the teeth that you lost because they're important. When you lose teeth, like exactly like you said, your mouth is very, very dynamic. You have, you're supposed to have a good fit between the upper teeth and the lower teeth. And let's say you lose a lower, a lower tooth. What your mouth is going to do is, is going to, it's going to, your body's going to try to compensate for that lack of support. So the teeth look for contact. So the teeth before and after the one that you lost will try to close that gap. The tooth on the top that was biting against that tooth in the bottom that you lost is going to try to shift down. And, that, and if that happens, your whole bite is now unbalanced. So it's not. And that, then that causes problem. That could, get, that could have many problems. That could have, you can develop some um, a TMJ. That, that right. That's what I was going to say. The, the uh, uh, temporal. Le 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 always, when yeah. I point like he knew it was TMJ, you yeah. did too. Yeah. So it, you, you can start having musculoskeletal problems with with the TMJ, you can, st you can ex if you already had gum disease, you can exacerbate the gum disease because now your bite is off. So on top of a, of a foundation that's not healthy, 
you're biting harder on some places and not in others, and it, it becomes a, a Pandora's box. It's so how do we go back and try to prevent all this from happening? Well, what, what, what do periodontists do to prevent these things from happening? Well, periodontal disease is, um, we can't cure the disease. We can try to maintain you healthy, control your plaque, and make sure that you don't lose more bone or gum tissue that you already lo already lost. But I think one one I think the biggest problem with us, the biggest uh, the biggest frustration that we have as periodontists, and the patients share that is that the disease is silent. Silent? It's a silent disease. It's a chronic degenerative inflammatory disease like diabetes or heart disease. You don't know you're diabetic until you test it for it. Right. Or until you have some type of, of coma, which you hopefully nobody gets to that point. But this is the same with gum disease. It doesn't hurt. So if you don't, if you're not examined, to have that disease. That's why it's important to go to a periodontist. We we're going to measure your, what we call pockets, what the, how much bone you've lost when you go uh, to our office. And then we're going to try to keep your teeth clean and maintain them clean just so that you don't lose one. Uh, so because it's a silent disease, uh, one of the things that I hear the most in, in the office, in all the offices I work, is that, well, I've, I've, I've gone to my dentist every six months or every year, and that never hurt. I never had a problem with that. When you said it didn't hurt, now I have a problem. What kind of problems come up? Well, your your gums will start bleeding. That's one of the first signs. Okay, bleeding gums. Bleeding gums. Loose teeth. Your teeth start to get a little loose. Um, um, a, a bad, bad breath is one of the other okay. things. Okay. But if a person's has periodontal disease and their teeth starting start to come loose. What is there a treatment to yeah. correct? What do you do? How do you fix that? Like with like with every disease, we characterize the disease. We diagnose at what stage of the disease you are. So the extent or severity of the disease will depend on how much bone you lost and in how many areas of your mouth. So if if your teeth are slightly loose. And we can see calculus. We can see an accretion of plaque under the gums. What we can do, uh, and that's uh, that's another technology that we have in the office that's just amazing. It's uh, the endoscope. We can go under the gums, and Rebecca, our our hygienist, that's does, the periscope. The periscope. Okay. So that allows us to go under the gums and see exactly where the calculus is, take it out, and that mainly gives your body a break to heal. Well, let me ask you a question. The dental technician goes in and they hold your jaw down and they go down with that. The little poking. That, uh, the poking device. Yeah, they poke in your mouth and get underneath the gum. And they can't get as deep as you can get with a scope, can they? No, they can't see as deep. They can't as, see it. That's yeah. the important thing. Yeah, yeah. They can feel it. Yeah. And yeah. I can feel them when they're scraping. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's before the periscope, it was more a, a tactile guided treatment we will go and we have what, what you mentioned as the little the poking device is a probe and it's it's a ruler and what we do is that the, the the distance in a healthy uh pocket and that pocket being the distance from the top of the gum to close where the bone is around your teeth and we measure that in six places of your teeth each tooth in your mouth that that distance should go from one to three millimeters why? Because you can clean with your brush about one millimeter under the gums, and you can make sure the plaque plaque does not uh, uh, develop there. So the plaque is what causes the tooth to come loose. Yeah, the accretion of plaque. So it, during time, and that's why it's hard because it doesn't hurt. Patients think think that everything is fine, and they have the accumulation of plaque for 30, 25 years until they start feeling something. When they start feeling something. That's the stage where probably they lost it. The tooth is hopeless. As it so, so really, one of the one of the best treatments is to ensure that you have control of the plaque developing on the teeth in your mouth. Yeah, As, is it, is that probably the most effective thing that that's, you can do in that, preventing periodontal disease? That's the least invasive way. 
most effective. What else can you do? Um, when in stages where the disease is advanced, when you lost a lot of bone, when those measure- measurements are about 9, 12 millimeters, which is really deep, we can still try and do that with the endoscope. And Rebecca has great su- success in the office, but it may be in the point where we decide to do surgery. We Maybe the point you do what? Surgery. So gum surgery. What ha- happens when you do the gum surgery? How does that, what does that do? Well, the, the main objective of the gum surgery is to have access to the calculus deep down the pocket. So if you, uh, if you have calculus really, really deep down the root of your teeth, you have to cut the gums and open the gums so that we can see where, where plaque is. I'm hurt. I know. I know. I'm hurt. Are you actually saying that if a person has periodontal disease and the, and the calculus is so deep, you can perform surgery, expose the calculus, take it out, and close the gums on top. Close of it. the gum and save the teeth. Yeah, we uh, because of our success with the periscope, we seldom do it here. It's you just, seldom lose teeth. We, we we seldom do that type of surgery here because we can't. We are able to get the disease at a stage that we can use the periscope and maintain the patients. How do you ever convince people, Dr. Fortato, that it's extremely important? And just why don't? Why isn't the Periodontal Association of the United States of America, why aren't they doing a better job of talking about what you and I are talking about in front of this TV camera today so people understand the seriousness of what this is? Because a deep cleaning on a tooth is... It's a minuscule cost compared to having an implant put in. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, there is a, a recent um, uh, campaign from the American Association of Periodontology that's called Love Your Gums, and they stimulate patients to uh, love the gums they're with. Um, I, I don't know how effective that has been. And as, as specialists, I think it's, it's our fault that we kept... Um, uh, um, we focus too much on, we try to see too much of the science and we, we fail in reaching out to patients and telling them what, what, what I'm telling you now. We try to do that our, in, in our own little world, which is the office. But I think if more of us reached out and did programs like this and we had radio shows like yours, that would be much better. We would, we would have much, much better results than what we have. You know, I'm about you, Dr. Ferdano, that... If we really got down to the basic bones of what we're talking about, few people have ever put on a camera what you're talking about today. I don't, Dr. Sheldon and I and all the shows we've talked about, we've never really been that explicit in talking about the fact that you can open the gums up, go down there, take the caucus out, yeah. sew the gum back up, put them back in. How effective is the juice plus and all that? Well, that's one of the factors of the disease. Uh, one of the factors is diet. Like any chronic de- de- degenerative diseases, diet is a big factor. Is a pay- plays a big role. Smoking plays a big role. Having other uh, chronic diseases play- plays a big role. So if you're in a good diet, your ability to heal and to fight those uh, infections in your mouth is much improved. Are you as much a believer in Juice Plus as Dr. Sheldon is? Right. You Tell know, the truth. Tell yeah. the truth. You know what's funny? I, I told you in the beginning that I didn't know Dr. Sheldon. I knew of him. Okay. And I didn't know he was a Juice Plus, a Juice Plus uh, person. Okay. And I was a Juice Plus person. You were? I was a Juice Plus, Plus person before I came here. So when I met him and, and, and when I read his book and I read about Juice Plus, I told him, you know, this is a perfect match because I, I truly believe in that. And I learned Juice Plus from, from gyms. I went to a gym and, and I, I heard a, a physician talk about Juice Plus. And I went and I've, I've read one article that they had on, on a periodontal journal. And then I started reading all the journals about Juice Plus overall for you know, the improvements you have in overall health. And I started taking it. And you start taking Juice Plus? Yeah. I'll tell you a secret. And you don't know this, but my daughter sells Juice Plus. Oh, I see. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons I ask a question because I knew that Dr. Sheldon gives Juice Plus to his patients yeah. 30 days before he does surgery. Yeah. 
because he believed strongly in the in the natural ingredients and in, in, in foodstuffs, how they affect the uh, restor- restor- restorative power of the body. Yeah, absolutely. And you're saying the same thing. Yeah. Maybe we can sell this to Juice Plus. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> we'll try that. What else, Dr. Furtado, we have about a minute left. What else would you tell our viewing audience about what you, Dr. Furtado, or the, a periodontist, thinks it's important for people to think about care of their teeth? Um, I think the most important part here is to um, go to go to the dentist, go to your periodontist. Um, make sure you check for gum disease. Um, we've been, for a while, we've been separated from, from the, the health of the rest of the body, but there's now a link between a lot of chronic inflammatory markers in your body that are related to gum disease together with diabetes, together or heart disease, together with chronic kidney disease. So you're not only thinking about your mouth if you have that checked. You're thinking about your whole body. And we'll, 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 we'll instruct you on nutrition, how to take care of your mouth, and how to keep your teeth. If you can't keep your teeth, we'll, we'll, we'll bring up uh, the best alternative. Yeah. I think that's, that's the, the best way to go. Too often people thought that the problem was up here and just filling the tooth. They thought the problem down was here was opening the thing up, putting valves in the heart and all that stuff. That's but what we're trying to avoid. Try to avoid it. Yeah. Doctor, I want to thank you for being with me today. It's, it's entertaining for me. Good. But I want to thank you, viewer, for watching today's episode of Healthy Seniors. And I hope you've learned something from Dr. Furtado.